We are now joined by a diasporan, uh, Dr. Kazim Bello, a member of Board of Trustees of the Nigerians in Diaspora organization. Thank you so much for joining us Thank on you. Uh, you. News Night. Yes. If you were not a member of uh, you know, NIDCOM, I would have asked you if the things you heard made sense to you enough to convince you that, look, there's no better time uh, to come invest in Nigeria. Yes, that's correct. There's what no are the key things, really, that you heard, you know, uh, convincing points? Yes, uh, uh, we had a lot of um, convincing points from the perspective of the government today. And, um, of course, uh, we've been, as diaspora, and in the couple of uh, years now, there's been a lot of focus. Uh, this may have been occasioned by the predominant situation we suddenly find ourselves like, occasioned by the pandemic and uh, the fact that we slided into a stress recession quickly after uh, we, we succeeded we won. So um, following the trend of other countries that have actually succeeded uh, with their diasporans, uh, you can name them Australia, Indonesia, uh, to a large extent India. When India, uh, Natural Gandhi was investing in education, People were mocking him, but today their greatest asset is the export of that knowledge, uh, and uh, they are bringing a lot of money. They are top one, number one in diaspora remittance globally, and um, we can do that in Nigeria because, believe me, we have that capacity in the Nigerian diasporas. Quite interesting. From yes. your last statement, it means you've bought into it already. Uh, well, you are a member of the board of trustees, like we just read there earlier, Ron. What carrots? are the government dangling before uh, people mm -hmm. like you uh, to attract their interest in terms of conducive environment for business? Um, that is a very good question. Uh, I wouldn't say government should not only look at diaspora Nigerians alone. Uh, we are living in a very global village now in terms of business connectivities around the world. So the, the, the attention of government should be to attract not only the aspirants, but also the international uh, uh, business investors. And I believe, like we have been told, the president has led in recent days. I'm really very impressed and that the president is global trotting, trying to bring mm -hmm. attention to Nigeria in order to, to focus on those investment drive. But I think the government should do more in trying to law its uh, Nigerians' uh, diaspora. Believe me. What um, are those specific things you'd like the government to do? Yes. Um, we can model what Australia did. We can model what uh, Indonesia did. And uh, we can look at other countries. Uh, Australia, before now, we, 15, 20 years ago, was a tourist attraction. People want to go to Auckland and things like that, mm -hmm. and uh, instead of going to London, because that's a replica of uh, London. But uh, today, they turn to their diasporans, and they, they flock around the world, brought the passion to investment, and the government was actually imparted that. Nigerian government needs to impart the aspirants to Nigeria. Um, we cannot only say, we give us the environment, the enabled environment, and leave it there you have to also make them feel that they are wanted. So they, they should yes. go further than that. And let me just ask you a very straight question. Host, uh, like I said, let me say it again, member of the Board of Trustees of Nigerians and Diaspora Organization. So what has been the response so far? I don't know what to add in a scale of 1 to 10. Well, the response from the Australian Nigerians has been very encouraging, especially from what we heard from the conference today. I mean, don't forget that we don't have all the statistics as well. But uh, this is the forum where you can gather all those statistics. So some record shows that um, quite a number of Nigerians are coming back to invest in the health sector. A lot of us are coming back to invest in the oil and gas industry, especially with the outcome of the PIB uh, passage. And a lot of them are going to tourism. I hear you okay. of them in the health what about sector. Your, yeah, I was going to ask that. Your yeah. specific <laughs> area. Uh, which area exactly are you... Um, you know, uh, well, uh, investing uh, in, and what are you projecting in terms of the jobs that will be created from, you know, you investing? Yes, um, I like you probably see my. I'm a private equity manager, so um, my focus is on infrastructure. To be honest, we look at uh, medium to small scale businesses in the in the emerging economy like Nigeria, 
and we put money into the air sector, we put money into fast infrastructure, not mm -hmm. roads, of course, infrastructure okay. that generates commercial oriented income, yeah. uh, so to say. And um, those are things that I think Nigerians also wanted. Um, they, they are looking at air sector tourism because they have multiplied effect in terms of generating employment mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, uh, and developing the human capital capacity for our youth, like uh, Ngozi have said. All right. so, Oh, oh well, they said final answer. I was going to oh. just drop in a very quick question, uh, and, right. and, and that was to be you're over there. Uh, so okay, so how has your you're over there, and I'm sure you're going to get back there after the meeting. So, yeah. how do you relate all this to them? How 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 has been your meetings over there? You know, what's it been like? Just give us a picture of what of what uh, Nigerians and diaspora organization uh, it's like over there what, what's, what's well, maybe in addition to that yes. what the challenges are for diasporans like yourself in okay let me take uh, this question direction. and I'll yeah. come to yes. the challenge very briefly um, don't forget that a channel like you are is doing an excellent job in terms of outreach Nigeria and diaspora are investing in something similar abroad believe me Mm -hmm. So we are investing in communication. We are investing in information technology. Uh, you will be amazed a lot of TV that are media related that are projecting those sort of kind of things that you are talking about among Nigerians mm -hmm. in UK, in Germany, in US, in Canada that I'm personally aware of oh. because I'm a oh. part of director member of uh, Nigerian diaspora in the continental America. Mm -hmm. So we are doing a lot in terms of reaching out and getting information to ourselves within ourselves in order to figure out how to cooperate and help Nigeria. And that's where probably the env enabling environment comes in with the federal government in order to tap to that. And coming to uh, what you asked about challenges, yes, of course, there are challenges. One of the things that I would say challenging for us, especially, is the image making for Nigeria. We need to change the narratives. Uh, there's a lot of things that is going on around the world that when you mention Nigeria, people kind of chuckle. But we need to change the narratives. And the only way to do that is to disseminate positive, strong information to our audience and then Can't bring agree. them to Nigeria. Can't agree more with so that. Much. That's very fantastic. Dr. Uh, Belo Kazim, Belo member, board of trustees of Nigerians in diaspora organization. Uh, we've had a good discussion with you. Just keep up the good work and thank you for being thank around. Thank you for having me. Thank you All so right. much. Yeah.